All right, all right, all right. In episode 20, we're going to be talking about telephone poles and telephone wires. One of my personal pet peeves is I hate to see telephone poles without wire on them. And of course, we have three different scales here. This is an in scale one. Usually in scale, I purchase the plastic ones. Boring. But the HO and bigger, I always make them because it takes about two minutes to make a telephone pole and they look much better. So I would strongly suggest that you spend some time figuring out how to make these telephone poles, or should I say power poles, it depends on what your era is, because in almost every scene around town, this is what you're going to see. So give it a try. Now, of course, if you're going to put wire on, you're going to have to have something to put it on to. Make a crossbar, and then I have wire sticking up for each side of the crossbar. I personally like most of the time in most of the scenes only a two wire telephone pole. First of all, it's easier to put the wire on. Secondly, it looks more rural, and a lot of my layout is very rural rather than city. In the city, I usually use the pre manufactured stuff. Of course, a most important aspect is the wire itself. I like to use something called Easy Line, which is my personal favorite. This stuff, I have no idea what it is, but it stretches about 400 times. Well, maybe not that much, at least 10 times. And so if you catch it on something, you don't break it. And I've tried all kinds of different lines over the years. I've tried threads and wires and stuff like that, but this Easy Line's way better. Now you also need an applicator. And I'll be showing how to use this applicator. It's nothing more than a hollow bit of tubing that you run the wire through which all of a sudden makes application of this easy line well like its name easy line easy and I'll show you how to use this applicator on your particular telephone poles okay moving right along I have this little base of plastic just to give you an idea of a basic underlay and it gives us something to put our telephone poles on I oftentimes use this plastic because it's easy and the stuff that I put on it is what I like to call slop. It's just leftover stuff from other ones. So of course what you need is a telephone pole and something to make a hole with. And generally speaking I really like foam rather than plywood because it's much easier to poke a hole in. Now for the larger format I actually like these long nose scissors. Makes a nice big hole and you just figure out where you want it, kind of what might look correct, and just kind of spin it around a little bit, make a hole. With plywood, you're going to have to use a drill. With the foam, it's easy. And then I put a little bit of glue on it, my personal favorite, Elmer's plain old white glue. It works the best for me. And so you shove it in there and let it sit up for a while. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to actually put three different sizes in here. The big one I kind of call O scale, and then I've got an HO scale, and then I got the N scale stuff that I purchase. And of course, you guys can make these, you can purchase them. I, of course, sell them. Yeah, well, you don't need to buy my stuff, but you can make your own, it's easy. So, as far as spacing goes, I like to space these telephone poles 30 to 60 feet apart, depending upon what the scene looks like. Now you don't really have to glue them in, you can just kind of shove them in, depending on if you're ever going to want to pull them out again. I generally only use a telephone pole once, so almost always I take and glue them in. Same thing for other scenery. Now you want to make sure that the line of sight of the telephone poles are correct so the line doesn't go up and down and up and down and up and down. You want to make sure that when you put the line on, it'll be from one to the next to the next at least in somewhat of a line. Ah, and another thing you want to think about is which side are the crossbars on? See how that middle one is the wrong direction? You want to make sure that all the crossbars are going on the same side of the telephone pole and the telephone poles are the same height. These are little tiny aspects that really make a big difference. And of course, you want to have them relatively straight. Not all telephone poles are straight, but relatively straight. A good way to understand what telephone poles look like is go out and look at them. Okay, so what you do is you run this easy line through your tubing 
I like to suck it through actually. It comes through very easily. And once you get it through, I like to put a piece of tape on it so I don't lose it. Okay, so when it's time to use it, of course you take the tape and you remove it. And this stuff is so stretchy. So stretchy. You want to be careful not to make it too tight when you put it on to the telephone poles. And unfortunately, it really doesn't work well if you want it to be hanging down like real life telephone poles do. You have to have it somewhat tight. So you get the easy line through, and then you simply run it from one telephone pole to the other. Of course, I have to tell you, you gotta have your glasses on. If you don't have your glasses on, you're not going to be able to see it. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. These uh, easy lines come in a number of sizes and a number of colors. Okay, so to start out, you put a little bit of glue on there, depending on what you like. I generally like to use the Elmer's for planting the poles, and I like to use CA glue, super glue, to put the wire on. So you put a little bit of glue on the first post. Now the hardest part of this whole adventure is starting the line. That's why I use the super glue, because it sets up so fast. And what you do is you make a little tiny knot in the end of the line and tie it onto the very first post. Okay, that's why you gotta have your glasses on, because if you don't have your glasses on, you're not gonna be able to see the knot. Now, caution note here, the CA glue has a tendency to deform this easy line. So use the dead minimum amount that you need. Now once you get the first place set, then you simply take and wrap the easy line around the next one of the wires. See I'm pulling it along and you want to make it just barely tight enough it's not sagging. Then you go to the next one and you wrap it around the wire that's sticking up. And that's hard wire, that's actual copper wire and you wrap it around a couple of times just like that then you set it down and make sure you keep some tension because if you don't have tension it's gonna pop right off of there okay the next step of course is to add a little more glue you want to have just a tiny little spot of glue in each one of these posts that are sticking up and before you add the glue make sure that the wire is pushed all the way down if you're not careful putting the wire on it kind of works its way up those posts so you want to make sure the wire is all the way down next to the crossbars when you put some glue on it, just like that. And I like to put glue actually on both sides, just to make sure it stays there. Now a disclaimer, if you're not real careful and all of a sudden it goes loose, all the wire pops off of all of the telephone poles unless you have it already glued. Then of course you move around to the other side. And then you take a few wraps. Notice it doesn't take much, just a few wraps around there and you leave it attached. Run it along. And remember what I said, you want the wire just tight enough so it's not sagging. You don't want to make it tight. Uh-oh, disclaimer, that sounds like the voice of experience. If you pull this stuff too tight, what'll actually happen is the telephone poles will lean over because this stuff is really stretchy and you can get it really tight but that's not what you want you want it just up snug so it's not sagging now this is the hard part when you put it over like that make sure it keeps some tension and make sure everything in the right place and then of course what do we do we put some more glue on there but not until after you push the wire all the way down next to the crossbars so it's nice and straight and consistent Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good. Sometimes you have to make a little adjustment. You have to move stuff around. And if you don't get it right the first time, who cares? You can just do it again. With this little applicator tube, it makes it really easy. See, I'm kind of struggling with a bit there because it wasn't straight, it wasn't right. Ah, uh, sometimes you can save them. Sometimes you can't. Ah, I think I got it. Pretty cool, huh? That's all there is to it. You gotta pick your size, you gotta pick your color. Uh, eventually, after the glue sets up, what do you gotta do? Well, you gotta cut off all the loose ends. And this 
you have to be careful with. You have to make sure you don't start cutting stuff off until the glue is completely dry. Yes, that once again is another one of those hmm, words of wisdom because that's how I figured it out. Now also you notice that my shears here are just not very sharp. You want to make sure that you have really sharp shears because this stuff is really stretchy, gooey stuff. Now look at that. Look at that. I mean, if this was string or thread, you would have broken it all by now. And that's not even as much as it stretches. Let me tell you, it can really stretch. Now you can't really see this too good yet, but I will show you some pictures later where it really shows up. So what do you think? Ah, now these telephone poles, the in-scale ones, you do a little bit different. What you do is you wrap rather than around the wire bit that's hanging up, like on my other ones, the home-built ones, you have to run the wire all the way around the individual crossbar. And actually when these came, they had three sets of crossbars and they were way too much work to put all those wires on. So I took the middle one out and I make them only two crossbars, which requires, of course, four wires. And these come in, I don't know, dozens of different kinds. Now this particular one has little nubs that stick up, little bumps that stick up. These are really easy, actually. You just run around the nubs instead of all the way around the crossbars. And they actually come out pretty good if you're careful with them. So what do you think? Pretty fun, huh? See, there I'm going around, round and round. And generally I like to go around twice because, well, it's, well, oh, I did three times there, look at that. Uh, who am I to say? Because if you only go one time around, it's much more prone to flip off before you put the glue on. And then you got to start all over again and do the whole silly thing, which I've had to do many times. But it's so easy, who cares? And once again, this is the hard part, keeping a little bit of tension there while you put some glue on. So those are the plastic ones, and they look pretty darn good when you're done if you're putting wire on them. If you don't, I mean look around at people's layouts. Lots of people have telephone poles, but not so many people have wire. And the wire really picks up your overall look and makes it so much better. So here's three different scales with wire on them using my applicator. Just a little bit of tubing. And let me show you some pictures around my layout. You might like it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We better look one more time at the display I made for you. What do you think? Doesn't look too bad. Three different scales. And look at that wire. Look at it, look at it. You're not going to worry about breaking it because it's so stretchy. And I gotta say, once again, it'll make your layout look so much better by having wires on your telephone poles. Don't leave those stupid naked telephone poles. Put some wire on them. It's easy, it's fast. Do it. Well, there you have it. Putting telephone wire on your poles is easy, fast, and makes it look really, really good. Give it a try. You'll be glad you did. Come back and see me again sometime. Bye now.